Uh, welcome to our another event of Bits and Bytes. Uh, today's topic is Unfold API Testing by two very knowledgeable speakers, uh, Arfan Sheikh and Santosh Katakam. Um, what do you all expect from the today's event? Uh, the event summary, summary is, our speakers gonna talk about API testing. They will also talk about the advantage of API testing and then advantage of automating those APIs. There will be a very cool demo, a live demo using um, a, an API testing tool. Uh, our speaker will also go through with a couple of slides of talking about what's the return on investment if you decide to automate the API testing. We will also have quiz and um, using kahoot.it and we will have a forum open for question and answers towards the end of the call. Next slide, please. A few words about Bits and Bytes event. Uh, Bits and Bytes event is a community uh, program organized by Cyber Group. Uh, we wanted to build this program around food and technology. We started this journey in October 2019. Um, we have had uh, quite a few events since then. Today is our 11th event, actually. Uh, we usually do these events on last Thursday of the month in Cyber Group office, but because of last year's pandemic, we couldn't do that. Um, in our offices anymore. So we are doing this as a webinar, as a live event. And I can't debate enough for going back live, bringing it back in our office and you know enjoy this event together. However, like I have seen a good in, in an increase in the number of participants even by event. So thanks to everybody for spreading the word and inviting your friends and family for joining this event. And like, again, like keep spreading the word um, you know, the participation is very important for us for this event. Um, today, we have this event unfolding the API testing. Our next event will be in March. The topic hasn't been decided yet, but the moment we will know the topic in the speakers, we will start publishing that and then promote that on meetup.com and also on CyberGriff LinkedIn page. For any of the previous events, if you want to go and then check it out, you can go and then look at the Cyber Group's YouTube channel. There is a recorded session available for you to go back and um, watch that. Next slide, please. Some of the housekeeping um, in general rules. Um, let's make this session very interactive. There is a feature in Zoom called raised hand. You can use the raised hand for asking any question or you can post your question in the Q&A section of Zoom. Our participants, um, our, our, our speakers, and then presenters, they will keep an eye on the question queue, and they will try to answer those questions in the next available window. We will also use Kahoot.it. The Kahoot.it you will use for quiz. So either go to Kahoot.it on your browser, or if you have a mobile app, download that mobile app and uh, we will share the pin when the time comes. The participation will be awarded with DoorDash gift cards for five lucky winners. So don't forget to participate. Next slide, please. With that, I will hand over the stage to Arfan. Arfan, all yours now. Thank you. First of all, thank you, Rocky and Hannah for setting this up. And thank you everyone for joining this after work event. I know there might be few people who are still working. So thank you again. So the topic for today, which I'm, I'm going to discuss uh, is Unfold API testing. Uh, I myself have a couple of years of experience uh, doing API testing. And I love this uh, because how seamlessly it integrates with your uh, ecosystem and the value it brings to your organization and to your uh, existing development process is amazing. So with that, uh, so what is an API? We'll start with API. So what is an API? Now, uh, there is a definition which is quite daunting. Uh, I would rather take a friendlier approach. Uh, basically, API are a set of commands of how a service can be used. Or put it this way, where uh, how two applications, uh, how two services can talk to each other. Now, here, if you see a real-world example where Bob a customer needs a pizza. So he will send a request via phone 
to a pizza store. At the pizza store, Tony accepts the request and he will respond back with a pizza in a delivery car. Now, similarly, your application, it will send a request for data via an API. The, your database or your application serv server will respond back with the response, will respond back with the correct response as per the request. So it's basically uh, API is something uh, how uh, your application would interact with using request and response. Now, one of the defining characteristics of an API is that it should be reusable, but you also need to define the scope where exactly uh, your API will be exposed and how it will be used. Now, here, if you see uh, majorly, you will see that it has been uh, in industry, you categorize in three uh, major areas, private, partner, and public. Private is something uh, where the API is consumed within the organization. There is no way it is exposed to outside organizations, so the customers are internal. Partner API is something where an organization have a contractual agreement uh, with a vendor, with a partner vendor, and they, uh, the, the data is shared across uh, for typical or a specific request through partner API. Uh, public API, like the name suggests, it's something which is public. It's exposed to for any everyone. Uh, it anyone can use it, consume it within your uh, application and web services. Some of the common public APIs, I would say, is uh, Nasdaq API. Then you have a uh, football API and weather app, weather API. At the bottom, if you see some of the most popular APIs uh, which are used heavily in the market, REST. SOAP, JSON RPC, and XML RPC. And uh, importantly, if you see is REST and SOAP almost uh, are, have captured almost 90% of the market. Now let's have a small fun quiz. So go ahead and open kahoot.it on your browser, or if you have a mobile app, kahoot, go ahead and launch. And we will have the pin in a couple of seconds. The pin is 1068867. Okay. Anna, should we start? Yeah, let's go ahead and start. Okay, let's start. Okay, so the first question coming up on screen. It's a poll. When is the most expensive time to discover a defect? Development, production, QA test, or a unit test? Okay, time up. All right, so we have people agreeing with production, which is the correct answer most the most costliest would be in production and uh, unit test gets zero that which is right unit test is when the defect is the least expensive so we have uh, we have our audience agreeing with that let's go to the next one true or false automation testing should be done before manual testing This should be an easy one. Mm -hmm. mm, we have an equal audience. So there, there could be a debate, but I would say automation testing can be done anytime. It doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to wait for manual testing to finish. So it, it's anytime you can start. Next one. So we have Maddie who's leading, Rocky second, Mogang is third. Let's go. It's a poll, multi-select, no right or wrong answer. When should you apply automation? Repetitive test, smoke and sanity test, test with multiple data sets and regression test cases.
Okay, let's see. So we have regression test cases, which is correct. Most of the time we do regression test cases. We try to automate that. And repetitive test, again, similar, same. Test with multiple data set, again, it's right where we are going to test with different data types and smoke and sanity test. Basically all are right answers. Let's go to the next one. It's a quiz. Which of the following will be more efficient in finding bugs, manual testing or automated test? This is, this is another debatable thing which we can talk. I think we can go to the next one, Santosh. The time is 43. Okay. So we have uh, automated test, which is, I would say I go with automated test as uh, the way to go. Manual testing, uh, no, because uh, there is a tendency where if uh, manually QAs are going to run the same test suite for a long duration or many cycles, then there is something called as a uh, testing pesticide paradox, which is where uh, you become so immune to the application that you don't find bugs. So that can be avoided with automated tests. Okay, let's go to the last one. Again, a poll, multi-select. How can you measure test automation effectiveness? Time saved from manual execution, number of bugs found, how many manual test cases can be automated, product stability measured by number of hot fix or prod issues. Again, no right or wrong answer. Oh, we have almost everyone agreeing with common. Okay, that's it's, I would say it's, you can measure uh, automation effectiveness, basically how, how much you saved with your manual execution. That's what, that's the crux of automation. Then how many manual test cases can be automated? So we don't need to run any kind of uh, manual test cases. Number of bugs found is again, a benchmark to see how well your automation tool is and product stability measured by number of hard fix or product, production issues, This, which is once you deploy your build, your automation kicks in and it finds out defect before it before the customer finds it. So, okay, we have an awesome uh, audience. Let's see who the winner is. Okay, so third one, Rogang. Number two, Maddie. And the winner is Rocky. Rocky already knew the answer. <laughs> So let's go back to our presentation. Okay, so there is a trend right now in industry where uh, industry is uh, heavily focused on uh, UI-based testing, uh, especially uh, manual or, it can be manual or automated both. Uh, and uh, it's like the organization have, have been spending budget and time on that. Okay, hold on, I should be talking about API testing. So here, if you see, uh, it's a typical uh, three-tier uh, three -tier architecture where your top layer is your presentation layer where your UI resides. Then you have your middle layer, which your business logic, where your API goes. And the third one is your database. So now uh, when a development would start, they will go ahead and start with your database and your business logic. Now, once this is ready, this is when your QA can step in and they start your testing. That's the reason why I was saying earlier that industry is like hugely focused on UI-based uh, testing, but the meat of testing can be done here once you have your business logic and database ready. You don't have to wait for the UI. You start way too ahead. You validate all your functionality. You complete your testing, and the value which it brings is far is much more. It exceeds what UI-based testing can bring. Now, typically, uh, how would you do an API testing? Like uh, API is basically a request and response. So the QA will be sending out, uh, their test cases would be kind of a request where they will be sending out a request and they will be getting a response that the response would be the one which will be, uh, they will be validating, comparing with their expected and actual result. And that's how API testing is done. Now, there are a lot of advantages of uh, API, testing, API testing. 
some of them uh, we want to discuss language independent. Uh, your APIs or application can be written in any language. It doesn't matter, .NET, .NET Core. Now, your API testing, your scripts, is you can write in your JSON or XML, which is much more easier to write and easy to interpret. So you don't have to worry about what your application ecosystem is. Uh, it can be a separate one. GUI independent. Like I said earlier, you don't have to wait for the GUI. You start way too early. You have your business logic and database ready. You can go ahead with your testing. So you no need of GUI. Test coverage. Now, uh, people would ask uh, what kind of testing you would be doing with your API testing? What kind of coverage would be? It will be just business logic and functionality testing. Uh, but I would say there is more to that. You can actually do non-functional testing like uh, security testing. You have your load testing, uh, stress testing. You can check your scalability, how good your API server is, how well it can handle those requests and responses. So that your coverage increases with your automated API testing. Faster release time. Now, organization have been moving to Agile. They want to finish sprints uh, in, and the sprint has to be successful and everything comes down to time. Now, this is where it, the value comes in API testing. You have your UI-based testing can take typically eight to 10 hours, be it manual or be it automated. It's not going to be that fast, but your API testing can finish like in like one to two hours and you are done. So this is this advantage is another plus for an API testing. Now here, if you see, this is your uh, typical uh, your test pyramid, uh, which in this, uh, shows uh, an industry standard how testing effort is divided in each layer. Uh, at the bottom, if you see, is unit testing, and you would be surprised to know that uh, developers spend if they do it properly. As for the process, they can actually do unit testing and complete, like do the testing effort, 70% of the testing effort they can spend here and the, they can close out 70% of the defect here. Now, the next layer is where your business logic, your application layer is. This is where your API testing goes. This can take 20% of the testing effort. And the last one, which is left as UI-based testing, manual, automation, exploratory, it takes 10% of the time. Now let's rule out uh, unit testing because developer does it. So if we are just considering QA, then you can see uh, API testing at business logic level almost covers double what manual or UI-based testing can do. So the return on investment on API testing is much more higher than what we can get in manual and UI-based testing. And now there are a lot of tools available for uh, uh, API testing. Some of the tools which we have uh, shown here, depending on the feature wise, basic to comprehensive and low cost license to high cost license. Uh, starting with rest assured, it's something with basic and low cost side. Uh, Fiddler and ASLQ is something uh, again with basic feature, but on the higher side, the license cost is a little higher. On the comprehensive side, if you see APIG, Tricentis, SOAP UI, it's, it's like complete tool, comprehensive, but it, it is little on the expensive side. And uh, Postman is something which is uh, complete feature-wise and low-cost license. This tool I would recommend I've been using and also today's demo, which Santosh is going to do, is going to be on Postman. Now, uh, when we talk about API testing, uh, like if for no wise people would ask what, how you are going to test uh, API when you don't have a UI. Uh, so basically API testing is done through these uh, request method. Like I said earlier, it's request and response. So a queue for a QA tester, the request would be something uh, on the left, you see get, post, put, and delete. These are just four, there are more. And the responses which you get once you run those requests is on the right. And these are the responses, which will be your result and which you are, are going to compare it with your expected and actual result. So uh, typically this is how QA, uh, you will be using these API test method to do their uh, API testing. With that, uh, I will open the floor for any questions before I hand over the stage to Santosh.
Rafan, I don't see any question in the queue right now. So okay. audience, if you all have question, uh, please use Q&A section or um, use raise hand feature. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rocky. Santosh, all yours. Thank you, Irfan. Uh, that was a nice presentation. Uh, in today's uh, demo, I'll be doing uh, a live demo uh, using Postman, and we'll also talk about how an automated API testing can bring in some return on investment and see how it can be integrated into CI CD pipelines. So I've created this process flow here uh, to uh, which I'm going to demo in a minute, uh, but I wanted to show it in a process flow where how uh, you can write an API test uh, using Postman. So before even uh, we start any testing, we need to have uh, certain things um, like you need to understand what kind of data it is required and what kind of test that you need to be writing to validate your functionality. And uh, I'm also going to show some uh, parameterization, uh, how it can be used. Um, and, <clears throat> and then we'll also talk about, uh, there are different kinds of um, runners uh, within Postman, which you will be able to run your request or send your request to, to get the response like Newman. Newman is a command line uh, collection runner for Postman. It allows you to run and test uh, the Postman collection directly on the terminal. It is built with the extensibility in mind that you can integrate this easily with any of the uh, CI CD tools. Mm. And Postman Collection Runner is uh, just an interface where you can run your collections. Collections, again, uh, when, I talk, when I say collections, collection is nothing but it's a set of requests um, in the sequence order categorized in, in a folder. That's all a collection means. And uh, we'll also be talking about how um, a response can be read and uh, how we can use the response to store the uh, store some of the data from the re response and send it back to the request. And we'll, finally, we'll also talk about um, monitors. Uh, monitors in Postman are generally used to track the API performance. With that, I'll bring up my Postman here. Okay, as I said, um, this is a collection of requests that I made. Um, I have an API. This uh, API is uh, basically responsible to create some users and, and also it allows you to perform some code operations. So I have created some uh, requests um, like a create request, as I was saying earlier, so in order to in order to run this uh, request, we need to understand what the data that it requires, and the test that it um, that we need to write to validate the functionality of that particular API. So Postman does allow you to uh, send uh, the the parameters to this request. Uh, uh, in order to create a user, we need uh, we need to be providing like employee name, salary, age, profile, image, and etc. So all of this information can be uh, fed to the uh, to this endpoint uh, using the static data. But that's uh, but that's not what we really wanted. We wanted our test uh, our test to be data independent. So we we wanted to pass the the data uh, dynamically to this uh, request. So. Postman gives you uh, the ability to create your data in the prerequisite script block here. So what I did, I added uh, some JavaScript functions here to generate the data that I wanted that I need to pass it to the request here. So I created uh, a random number and then assigned the random number to the name and stored that in a variable called employee name. And I also created a random salary and both of which are being passed uh, to the uh, request um, here. And then uh, there's also a section for test where you actually write your test uh, to verify and validate the response and also the actual functionality. So the first test uh, that I have uh, created is here is um, basically whenever you run your request, you need to make sure that you are getting a successful response. 
And uh, in order to verify if your response is successful, your status code should be either 200 or 201. Um, and, then, and then I also wrote another uh, small test where um, it validates uh, the response and ensures the user has been created successfully. And uh, in here, uh, I've added another piece of code where it captures, uh, it takes the response and captures the data of the response and then use that response as an input to the uh, subsequent request. Let's see all of this, uh, how it ties up together. Let me just run this request and see uh, what will happen. Okay, my request, I ran the request. I was able to create uh, a successful user record here with the name test8828. All of this data here was uh, passed dynamically and it was created uh, this record successfully. And now uh, here, uh, this user ID is the field that I am capturing, uh, the ID seven. And I wanted to use this ID and want to modify this particular record uh, in the subsequent request. Say so I have a modify user uh, request here. I'm passing that user ID here as number seven and uh, I have the body here. I wanted to make change the name of the employee to Tim Winters uh, and then run the request. And then it did. And the, you see here the successful message here, uh, the success uh, response code is 200. So Postman also allows you to add um, good number of tests and it gives you um, the ability to pick and choose uh, some of the inbuilt uh, code snippets uh, on the right hand side here. You just pick and uh, and modify your uh, code uh, to uh, to suit your needs. And um, there's also other component that I would like to show here. If if you have a scenario where you want to uh, validate your API can handle multiple data sets. Like I wanted to see if my API can really create a number of users like 100 users in one go. So for that kind of thing, you, you can always use data parameterization uh, in the Postman. All you need to provide, uh, you need to create your data sheet uh, in such a way that it uh, it will be accepted by this request like uh, like the employee name, salary, age, and profile, and pass that data sheet to this request and then run as a collection. Then, um, as I can show you here, run. I have this user uh, data sheet here, and uh, let me show you the preview here. I have five records in here which I wanted to enter uh, or create. And I run this collection and then it just, uh, it just runs um, the, uh, the request and then it creates uh, five users um, as per uh, the, the, the Excel sheet. <clears throat> so that's a very good tool that, is, um, that can be used to really set up your data for your testing or for, your, uh, for, for performing your uh, validation on the APIs. So, and uh, there's also another way that we can run uh, this collection uh, from the command line, like I was uh, telling earlier. Um, if you want to run the same collection in the CI CD uh, pipeline, you could do so. And that is uh, from the command line, like I have this, uh, I have this on the command, uh, I'm using, uh, a command called newman, which is an extension of Postman, which basically accepts the path of the collection and uh, the environment that it wants uh, that you want to run. So I can just give that on the command line and then hit uh, enter, and then it will run. It will run the same collection, and it it will also gives you a quick uh, summary of what your test looks like. So this is a great feature uh, that can be used into the CI CD process, uh, which will overall um, help uh, the testing process uh, to be faster and to be better coverage.
Mills, we'll also talk about um, uh, monitors. Uh, so Post, um, Postman allows you to create some monitors. As I said earlier, monitors are used to track the API performances. Uh, so if you want to make sure your API is working um, as intended, so you can set up these monitors um, and these monitors will run on the cloud and then will notify if, if any time the APIs goes down. So I have uh, set up a couple of monitors, just wanted to show you. Uh, so it gives a pretty good dashboard where it runs um, every hour, Every you can put them on a scheduler, it runs uh, on a frequency and it also uh, gives you uh, to the details like what passed, what failed, and it gives you a console log uh, with all the information. I also have an example of uh, a monitor that fail. And as you can see here in the console log, it gives you all the information why it failed, where it failed. So that's uh, that's on the uh, Postman. Uh, let's talk about how an automated API can bring in uh, the return on investment. As you can see in this graph, uh, in order to perform any testing, uh, and when you take an approach of manual testing, which includes like creating the test cases, setting up the data, setting up the environment, running your test, uh, reporting, maintenance, and finally, um, finally you're maintaining your test cases. So all of that activities would take uh, time and effort uh, to uh, over the course of the project. As you can see, this line is going up and up uh, through the course of the project. But when you wanted to do uh, the same thing, taking the automation approach, uh, you are going to spend uh, time and effort initially. And after a certain point, you would see your cost um, uh, line is completely flat throughout the uh, course of the project. And the difference in here is what you see a huge cost same. And I would like to relate this to an example uh, or uh, my experience. Um, when I was working for a client and and this, uh, and I was working on a project and this uh, application had, was built uh, with a lot of APIs and it interacts with the hardware system. And that hardware system was uh, talking to the backend systems using this API. So in order to validate uh, this system, it was a manual intense process where it took like five to seven days uh, for two resources to complete one cycle of test execution. But, um, and then we came in and um, we converted all of the um, APIs and created the API automated test. And then we were able to bring down the overall execution time under 20 minutes. And that itself is a huge cost saving to the project. So um, once you have your uh, test created, it is pretty easy to integrate your automated tests into any of the CI CD pipeline tools, uh, CI CD tools like you can uh, take Octopus or Jenkins or uh, Circle CI, any, any tool that you name it, you can integrate your API test into it since uh, Postman does allow, like uh, not only Postman, but also the other API tools will allow you to uh, write a small piece of code which will run. Uh, right after the deployment. So you can you can pretty much run all of your APIs right after the deployment. And, and that, that pretty much gives the entire uh, project team the full confidence of uh, the application that is being developed. And also um, it, uh, it gives a better coverage. Let's talk about some of the advantages of uh, going with API testing um, and automating the API testing. First thing, uh, it really saves a lot of time. Um, if you take, uh, if if you look, if you if you take an example like, um, you can run the API test. Um, the API test takes very less time when compared to a GUI test. 1,000 API test takes around 10 minutes and 1,000 GUI takes around 10 hours. And that itself is a huge time saver. And uh, from the cost perspective, uh, in order to 
write an API test, it takes very less time uh, than a GUI test. As a result, you'll see a, a tremendous amount of um, uh, speed in the testing process, and also uh, it gives you a better coverage. This uh, obviously will free up the resources so they can work on the other, uh, the other activities. The other big advantage uh, of going with automation uh, of APIs is you, you don't have to rely on the UI. Since APIs are built uh, and worked on the back end, so all of these can be automated and uh, they can run uh, pretty much without the UI. So the, the other advantage is like you can caught the issues right in the early phases of the development cycle. Uh, and it, it, it obviously saves a lot of time investing into uh, the G, uh, any impacts in the GUI at the later site, uh, later point. Um, it also, uh, in order to maintain the uh, API test, it takes minimal to zero effort uh, because when, when the APIs are not changed, then you don't have to maintain them. And APIs are very unlikely to get changed because they are the core business uh, logic. So unless you have a big change in, in your requirement, you will not go for a change in the APIs. So uh, from the maintenance standpoint, it is a very, very less maintenance. Let's talk about uh, some of the best practices that we can apply as part of automation uh, of API testing. So first thing, um, always uh, we need to make sure that all the, uh, all the test cases uh, that are created are categorized. That way uh, they, can be, uh, they can be referred uh, uh, easily and you can execute them in the order that you want it. It's always a good idea and good practice to maintain um, your, uh, your test cases uh, and categorize them and prioritize them. Data-driven testing. So whenever you write your API test, make sure that your tests um, are written in such a way that your data should drive that test. And then that will eliminate the need of preparing the data sets. Remove the dependencies. Uh, as you know, as you all know, the APIs are heavily dependent on other APIs or the other external services. So making sure that all the other external dependencies must be tested prior to testing the dependent APIs because any, any changes in the external services would heavily impact on the dependent APIs. And it is also a good practice to include uh, negative cases in your test suite. Whenever you create your test suites, make sure to have more negative test cases because um, you don't want to have a happy path. And when there is, a, when there is an invalid condition or invalid data that, um, that you want to see, then uh, your API may fail uh, in production. So it's always a good idea to uh, make sure to have uh, more negative uh, testing. Sorry. And finally, there is uh, always, always try to spend some time to come up with a very good comprehensive API testing tool uh, that can you can use for API testing, like um, like the one that I was showing. Postman does come with a comprehensive uh, features where you can create your uh, monitors, you can set up your environments, you can run your collection, you can do your data parameterization, you can as well do some uh, API documentation. So it's always good practice to have a very good tool along with you to perform uh, thorough API testing. With that, I am uh, concluding my presentation and I will open up uh, the floor for any, any questions. Thank you, Santosh. Um, I see there are a few questions lined up in the queue already. Uh, the very first question I see here is, um, can you combine API test cases and UI test cases together for automation? So uh, let me answer that. Uh, I know uh, where this is coming from. Okay, so uh, you want to do this, uh, you want to combine UI-based testing and uh, API testing. 
what you're trying to do here is basically trying to uh, validate the data integrity and your UI consistency. Now, there is tool-wise, there is no such tool where you can combine both of them together. There might be, but you will, you will not have a comprehensive feature-wise uh, tool. So rather, you would take an approach of uh, segregating the test cases, your automation test cases in such a way that your uh, core functionality is being tested through API and your UI-based validation is being done by your UI-based automation. Let's say for an example, uh, you have an API service of creating contracts it, it creates a digital contract. Now, you can check the core functionality of the contract. Let's say there are some states where a particular kind of limitations are there uh, and for age-wise. So you can create a contract, uh, but you the core functionality using API. Now, on the UI side, you should not be validating end-to-end -to, -end to contract. What you should be doing is just validating the fields, just going through where the test, uh, all the fields are accepting the right parameters and it is doing the whole uh, form submission till that you should be validating. So the answer is you need to segregate the test cases in such a way that API test does the core functionality and your UI based uh, testing does your UI based uh, validation. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question I see here is, are there any good tools other than Postman that you can suggest? Also, what should be the strategy to test both services? Okay, so uh, they, there are a number of tools uh, available in the market, uh, like uh, the one that um, Airpon was showing in, the, um, in that uh, comprehensive uh, versus basic tool, rest assured. There are a lot of different tools that are available, um, but with, um, with the SOAP services, you can certainly use SOAP UI or uh, as well like Postman has been evolving and then they are also coming up with the, uh, uh, with the feature where they can actually do the SOAP testing, SOAP UI testing. Okay, thank you. Um, what are the best ways to mock test APIs? That's the next question. Can you come again? Uh, so the question is, what are the best ways to mock test APIs? To so mock testing? Oh yeah, so so there are, there could be a situation where um, your um, your dependent APIs uh, are not ready, but you want to run your uh, your API uh, to be validated, right? So again, I'll go back to the Postman. Postman does um, gives you great um, insight into how you can create your mock uh, servers and 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 you can as well integrate your collections uh, to run. Uh, your test against that mock server. So it, it pretty much builds the data that you are looking to get uh, back on your APIs. Okay, and I see that one more question, which is on the same line, and I think you have already answered that. Um, it's asking that how do you test if your APIs are not ready? Um, yeah. so I think the answer could be you can build your mock test using Postman tool and then um, Run those test cases against the mock test. Okay. One last question I see here. How do you recommend preparing test data for automated test API test cases? Again, uh, let me let me answer this. So depending on the specific uh, specification or the requirement, uh, let's say uh, like like just giving an example, uh, uh, a digital uh, user you want to do a new user registration so typically your test data what you will have to do here is uh, you will have different kind of field and you will have a specification which defines what kind of uh, field will take what kind of data depending on that you are going to prepare different set of test data to run your test like how uh, Santosh showed in Postman, you can drive your test data, uh, putting in more uh, different kind of test uh, test data. That's how you will be doing it. Okay. 
Right. Thank you, Arfan and Santos. It was very good event, and then I I learned a lot, especially your story about return on investment on your um, life project, where uh, you mentioned about converting all your manual test cases to an automation. So anybody who are also interested about understanding and learning about how to uh, how to increase your return on investment or increase your profit on pro project. Please reach out to our speakers and um, go back to the to the slide. Um, contact information is here. If you want to take a screenshot or make a note of their um, email address or look at their LinkedIn on um, based on their name, reach out to them if you have further questions related to today's session. With that, I um, hand it over to Hannah for announcing the winners for today. Thanks, Rocky. Um, and a big thanks to Irfan and Santosh for speaking tonight. Um, we really appreciate everyone who took the time to join the session and participate. Um, we have some DoorDash gift cards to give away. So our winners um, will be receiving an email with those gift card codes. And that's going to be Maddie, Rugonk, Aruba, Milema, and Rahul. So congrats, guys. Thanks for being here tonight. And we'll be looking for that email. Awesome. Thank you. Um, thanks again for everybody for joining today's event. And keep an eye on meetup.com for our future events.